This section is basically, or this chapter is maintenance of the blade. So we get lots of questions on how to clean them. You know, should you oil them? Um, maybe tightness of the sheath and that type of stuff. And I mean, we've had these conversations before and, and obviously uh, they were lessons that were passed on earlier in our lives that don't seem to be uh, pretty common anymore. So what I wanted to do was just create this video so we could uh, answer that and uh, get that information out. So I use the MDV, I use any of the knives technically. Um, what are your suggestions for basic cleaning and then oil and all this other stuff? Outstanding. Well, I always have to bite my tongue on this because we get a tremendous amount of emails of, of things that I would normally think that would be common sense knowledge. And of yeah. course, I was a Boy Scout, pretty much everybody I know. I'm 60 years old, so everybody else was a Boy Scout. But common things that were handed down to us at an early age are not so in the case. So I'm not poking fun at anybody. What I'm saying is, hey, we realize that we need to teach people how to take care of things. So we get a lot of, um, like, for instance, on folders, I'll, I'll get a lot of emails that will be like, hey, the hardware fell out. Like, or I lost a screw out of it. Well, to me, for every mechanical thing that I own, there's a maintenance schedule on it now just like we were just talking with your wife, Jess, maybe I've got a little ADD about that. But with any mechanical thing, there is a maintenance schedule, whether it's changing the oil in your car or cleaning your firearm, making sure your firearms aren't falling apart. A, a knife is no different. So right. there's some basic things that you need to do on a regular basis, especially with your carry tools. Mm -hmm. um, on a folder, uh, you want to inspect all of the hardware. You mm -hmm. want to make sure that all of the components are tight, you want to make sure that the blade locks up tight and that its adjustment has not gotten out of sync. We don't have any excess wiggle in the blade. That all these hardware pieces are done. And if they're not tight, then I need to go through and either teach myself how to tighten them up or reach out and request maintenance from the company. Right. Whether this is a toaster or whether it's a knife. Every mechanical thing is put together. Therefore, eventually, just because of the way the world spins, it's going to want to come back apart again. Right. It's just how the forces of nature work. Mm -hmm. Things that are assembled want to come back apart. That's just how they work. So as far as regular common maintenance goes that I've always thought was just common sense and I've been educated to the fact that it's not common sense anymore is you need to keep your things clean. Now, most people that own a firearm know that after they go shoot the firearm, Mostly, they need to take it apart, clean it, inspect it, make sure it's working right, perform a function check, um, but with a knife. So there's different levels of dirty. You know, Let's say you have to utilize this knife in a self-defense situation. It's going to get very bloody and very icky. You're probably going to have some guts on it and all kinds of ugly things on right. it, right? How do you deal with something like that? Well, very, very simply, just some basic good antibacterial soap. Um, a lot of hunters are very keen to this. Then it hasn't passed down to people that aren't hunters. Hunters will take their knife and dip it in Clorox, like use a little water and bleach together. Mm -hmm. um, now I've seen people make mistake of they soak their knife in Clorox. Clorox is is a uh, it, it's a corrosive material, so you don't want to do that. It, it'll lead off your coating and do all kinds of evil things to the scales. Mm -hmm. But just simply dousing it in in a Clorox um, uh, water mix will disinfect it completely um, and then just clean it you know get a good soap and water on it and then uh, I recommend any kind of a light oil you know we've got you know fire clean is a great thing to clean goopy stuff off with we a lot of guys use it for their firearms pretty much any oil or cleaning uh, product that you use on your firearm or any other metal product tools or whatever would be great for a knife so clean your knife inspect your knife um, obviously, don't cut yourself. Check for sharpness. Make sure there's no rolled edges. Make sure you don't have any loose parts. If you have some tape coming off, retape that. It's just standard maintenance is all it is. And, and it's something that needs to be performed on any kind of a tool, whether it's a wrench or a screwdriver 
or a firearm or a knife. So right. if you carry a knife, make sure that you're inspecting your knife on, you know, maybe a weekly basis, bi-weekly, maybe put it on your calendar once a month just to check all the hardware, check that your ranger bands on your rhino sheath are good, check that your hardware is tight, get a screwdriver out and snug them up. Mm -hmm. That way you don't lose your knife. Um, so all these things are not common sense anymore. And so we're just dropping that knowledge out there that basic common maintenance procedures should apply to a knife too. And that's really the bottom line on that. Right. Uh, so how about uh, oiling the knife? So you get a brand new uh, blade from Scallywag and you want to carry it. Mm -hmm. um, should they oil that? Should, you know, what... Is there anything that you suggest, uh, common household uh, items? Um, you know, should you put WD-40 on your folders? Like, these are questions that we get, and they're not mm -hmm. silly questions. They're, they're just, not silly you know, at all. We, we look at them funny because when the emails come in, we're like, are you freaking kidding me? And then you realize that, hey, nobody's taught these people this. Oh, yeah. And that's, oh, that's that just there's a lot of people that weren't taught a lot of mechanical things as they grew up through the generations. Our generation was all mechanical because, you know, our fathers and our uncles and our, our grandfathers, you know, when you bought something, you needed to make that last because it was expensive and you needed to make it last. And they, that was the day that products were made to last a lifetime. Now, a lot of things are made as disposable, like about the time the Bic lighter came out, started the generation of the disposable mm -hmm. uh, product. And that's when maintenance kind of went out the window. So. Every single knife that, at least in Scallywag and most knife makers I know, every single knife that goes out is wiped with oil and uh, like a microfiber towel. Like I use little towels that you use to clean your car with. Mm -hmm. I've got a dozen of those that I wash every once in a while. They build up some oil on them. I could pretty much often grab one and just wipe my knife on. It's got enough residual on it that it just, it, it takes the dust off, takes any dirt off. You know, if you use your knife for utility purposes, like cutting open boxes, you'll get adhesive on them. Just get that stuff off there because that's a great pl place for corrosion to start and or it creates a dull spot on your blade if it's hung on the edge of the blade. Right. Um, and then look for wear and stuff. Uh, like for instance, the Rhino Sheath is a press fit sheath so it drags on the side of the blade unlike a retention style sheath that it snaps in and is usually loose on the blade. You know, watch for any wear spots. Those are areas that I want to get a little bit more oil on. Mm -hmm. So household oil, WD-40, I mean, 90% of the time we use WD-40. Right. Um, some people will complain about that, that WD-40 is not really meant as a lubricant. It's meant as a cleaner. Uh, WD-40 is basically a fish oil. It's meant to replace, uh, it's water, uh, it takes a place of water, it'll get water out um, and it'll replace any corrosive uh, moisture with an oil base that will keep it clean. High-end gun oils, light, any kind of light oil. I wouldn't use motor oil because it's too thick. Don't use olive oil or cooking oils because olive oils and cooking oils will spoil because right. they're vegetable grade, right? Mm -hmm. And vegetables spoil, same thing with the oil. And then pretty soon you'll pull your knife out and you'll be playing with it. You'll be like, yeah, it yeah. stinks. Not, not all oils are and, and uh, you're the like, same. You're like, yeah. oh, my knife stinks. Yeah, right. and yeah. So use a, use a good petroleum-based oil. Um, whether it's an expensive oil or an expanded foil. I mean, honestly, God, almost every scallywag knife goes out with some WD-40 on it at some right. point. Well, I mean, the, the other uh, thing to consider is when you are carrying something for personal protection, you're going to probably carry it on you all the time. Uh, if you work outside a lot or, or you have it on you when you're sweating, um, you know, it's going to get uh, sweat on it, which mm -hmm. has salt, in which case, if you don't clean that blade on a regular basis, then it is going to rust. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is something that people have to understand. Now, uh, that is a good, a good solution to that if you are going anywhere, say, like to the beach. Um, that would be the aluminum versions of mm -hmm. stuff, right? Because Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just almost impossible to uh, not have your blades rust in, in those kinds of mm -hmm. scenarios. But aluminum, at least what we're using, is not going to rust uh, in those scenarios. Mm -hmm. You'll get a little bit of a, aluminum will do aluminum oxide. That's its process. The nice part about aluminum is when it corrodes, it goes through its process of corroding and, and then it stops. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas rust never sleeps, as we know, and will continue to eat the blade away. So yes, absolutely. Matter of fact, you'll see a lot of people in, in you know, knife people will hand the knife to somebody and they'll be like, oh, look at 
look at that. And you'll be like, ah, don't touch my blade, right? And then the first thing you're thinking is, where's my towel to clean this off now, right? Because mm -hmm. I need to clean that off because now the oils on my hand have gotten on there. And on a, like a high carbon steel Damascus blade or like a 1095 blade, if you put your thumbprint on it and then don't clean that off, you're going to have a corroded thumbprint on there. Right. Like you're going to have somebody's, you know, identity on your knife forever. So you want to clean that off. And uh, matter of fact, you just, just touching that myself drives me crazy. So I got to get my shirt out because I didn't grab a towel <laughs> and I've got to clean that off because that drives, makes me crazy. Right. So you want to just keep track of what's going on with your knife and inspect it every once in a while. That's the biggest thing that I can recommend to people is actually stop and look at your blade. Is it dirty? Does it need to be cleaned? If so, clean it. Things like sheets, you know, like I said, everything that's assembled wants to come apart. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like that screw for that button. Yeah, that, like that so, thing. you know, you may not understand how it's made, but inspect it. Like take it apart and be like, okay, that snaps. So maybe that wants a little bit of oil in there. Oh, there's a screw there. Well, maybe take a screwdriver. Is that tight? Well, if I tighten it too much, does it make the knife hard to get out? Well, no, that doesn't change anything. Or maybe there's a fine line there. Or if you've got a screw that continually wants to come out, maybe put a little blue Loctite on it and put that screw back in and then let it dry and that'll keep that out. If you want to make it so you can never take it out, use a little red Loctite mm -hmm. and then you'll have to drill it out and cut it off. Well, that was my question. You probably already answered it, but the Loctite comes in different colors. Is there a suggestion? Sure. So like, obviously for this, uh, this screw right here, the tighter it gets, the harder it is for the blade to rotate out. But yes. there are uh, a number of uh, screws here that mm -hmm. you would want to permanently lock in unless mm -hmm. you want to take this apart for some reason. And the reason would be to clean it because mm -hmm. uh, there are areas that are very difficult to do that. But let's just say I don't even care about that um, and I, you know, what, what are the differences uh, between those colors and you know, are there any do's and don'ts for, for that? Well, the good way to remember is blue Loctite, blue is safe and red is danger, right? Mm. So blue is safe. You can generally put Loctite on a decent quality piece of hardware and thread it in and you'll be able to loosen that hardware. Red is a permanent lock. You'll probably never get that out without heat. Right. Uh, you'll need to heat the product, which in this case, let's say we use red Loctite on this piece. Um, and then we had to heat this, it would melt the sheet. So it's it's done. We'd have to grind it off or something in some way to get it free. Uh, red Loctite is permanent. On on knives like, you know, like a folder that have a lot of hardware on it, um, man, go, go, to, go to Lowe's, go to Home Depot, order it online on Amazon, get yourself a little small set of Torx drivers and small screwdrivers, like, you know, jeweler screwdrivers. Just get yourself some basic tools. I'm, I'm sure if you have a pistol, you have some basic tools. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have to be a mechanic and know how to fix everything, but just some basic tools will go a long way. These are typically normally Torx screws. And if you just put your Torx on there and give it a little bit of tightness, if it's loose, just snug it up. If, if then the next time you inspect your knife and that's loose again, then I would carefully take it out, inspect it, and put a little bit of blue Loctite on it and put it back. It takes very little. Like just You don't need to coat the whole threads. Just one little drop on the threads and as you screw it in, it'll coat the whole thread base. So you don't need to flood your knife with Loctite. Yeah. Um, we usually advise that people don't take their folders apart to clean them, mostly because there's bearing packs in here. Mm -hmm. And unless you're very good at reassembling small things, you're just gonna have parts everywhere and then you're gonna be like, yeah. oh my God, I destroyed my knife. Yeah. Um, but blasting I, one out with WD-40, I like to open my knife and take a can of WD-40 and just spray it all up in there, get in there with a big long hose in on it, you know, a little red hose and just get in there and spray all that out and shake it out. And then if you've got a source of bottled air, you know, canned air or an air compressor, you can blow it out and then just wipe the knife down real good and then function the action on the knife several times. Mm -hmm. And you'll just be like, wow, my knife's working again. Cause lint, dust and yes. dirt and debris gets down in that mechanism and balled up around all the bearings. And you can just clean that out very easy without having to take the knife apart. But clips are a problem, inspect your hardware on the clips and just, just check the general knife. I mean, my general, if you handed me this knife and I was going to carry it, the first thing I do is open the knife, make sure it locks. Is the blade tight? Yes. Is, is everything tight on the knife? Nothing's loose. Inspect it. Nothing looks like it's coming apart. If I had my tools with me, I would just check it real quick and be like, okay, that knife's good to go. That yeah. knife's good to carry. Same thing as doing a function check on a pistol. Right. Like if you handed me a pistol and I was going to go out for the night, 
I would do a basic function check on it. Mm -hmm. I'd look, is it dirty? Does it need to be clean? Okay. It, does know, it I, need oil? Yeah, it doesn't no, need oil. Is it good no to go? Or do I just need to do a basic function check? You know, rack the racket, does it lock to the rear? Does the safety work? Does the trigger work? Put it all back together, load it. And right. Yeah, and that, that also um, important tip is you need the right tools yes. for the hardware. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure these uh, screws, we found this out this week. I think the, these screws are uh, actually titanium, uh, by the way, because right. uh, they destroyed one of my uh, <laughs> one of your tools. To toy screws. I was like, yeah. I think uh, I I stripped this. And then I looked at it and I was like, no, I didn't strip this. And, and, I, and I looked at it and I was like, it destroyed my tool. Like, well, that's, that's awesome. something that people need to know too. When you're dealing with a tiny little screw like that, you know, you don't get a big tool out and crank yep. on it because you break it. I mean, there's, it's a very small screw. Mm -hmm. um, most of these screws are, even your pivot pins, it doesn't take much torque on those to get those to where they need to be. You don't need to crank them down because you will strip them out. Because I mean, you know, if you look at the torques, uh, you know, in here, if you look at where that hole goes in, it's very, very small in there. And so there's very little tool in there. And yeah. therefore you'll strip it very, very quickly. Right. Um, so it, just inspect it for looseness. That's the best thing I can recommend. It's just what we call general maintenance, which isn't so general anymore. So right. yeah, we exactly. don't mind passing this information down because nobody, you know, oftentimes people get a knife and they're like, oh, I just carry this. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything with it. And just, just inspect it, clean it, yep. oil it. If things are loose, tighten them. And, and otherwise, you know that then when you put the knife on your belt or clip it on, um, you know, we get a lot of complaints about like the tech locks. Uh, people will get a knife and it's got the tech lock, the belt lock thing on it, and you'll put it on your belt and then... A year later, a piece of hardware falls out of it, and then they're upset. And they yeah, so you haven't done maintenance for a year. You haven't it's... done maintenance for a year. Yeah, so not a problem. We understand now that people just haven't been taught maintenance through the years. Their grandfathers um, didn't didn't bang you over the head with a with a stick and tell you, "Hey, have you oiled that? Have you cleaned that?" So you're not allowed to do that anymore. You're not allowed to play with no, that tool no, anymore. No, stick, you didn't, clean stick, it. You didn't stick, take care of it. You got to value your beat tools. Children with sticks anymore. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> Uh, my anyways. grandpa used to whack me on the top of the head with a cane. Yeah, yeah. So. we could trade stories. Yeah, um, exactly. So the <laughs> the the big uh, takeaway is it's uh, a tool that you are going to use every day or for an important purpose. Mm -hmm. If you don't take care of your tools and don't take care of your toys, they will go away. Mm -hmm. um, so there are these more expensive um, oils. Uh, so this is one that I just picked up for this video for, uh, Amazon. This heavy duty oil is to stop rusting. Um, do you suggest people if, if they don't care about purchasing, you know, a uh, specific oil for this, do you suggest that they do this or is that just unnecessary? Well, WD-40 is not really intended. WD-40 was intended to displace water. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not necessarily a lubricant. So if you want to get a light gun oil, uh, which you can buy, you know, bottles way bigger than this for a couple dollars, right. it's always going to be a more refined petroleum product. Mm -hmm. Whereas WD-40 is, is base is fish oil. Um, you can spray WD-40 in your mouth and you're fine. Uh, I don't recommend you do it. I'm, I'm not certainly not going to suggest out. that you do. But at the end of the day, it's not a petroleum-based product. It's a fish oil-based product. So a petroleum-based product for lubrication and, and corrosion resistance is always going to be better. You certainly don't need to go out and spend $50 on a little thing of oil, right. uh, which I know these were probably 5 or $6 a piece. Um, but you certainly can uh, get yourself a good gun oil of any flavor. Um, I've even got a lot of guys that swear by uh, frog lube, mm -hmm. which is not an oil at all. It's more of a paste. Yeah. And then they just work it into the rag and put it on their knife and it works great. But anything that you like, especially if you guys are far firearms guys and you have a cleaner, you know, whether it's a, a cleaner and then an oil, uh, utilize those products on your knives. Those are perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have anything but WD-40, it's better than nothing. Right. Absolutely. And WD-40 right. with a little bit of a... Uh, Steel wool will clean off rust and stuff, but be careful about scratching your finish. Yeah. I always recommend WD-40 and just a good rag and work it a little bit because surface rust will come right off with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, the next video is uh, sharpening the MDV, in which mm -hmm. case me, you, and Javen uh, had long conversation mm -hmm. on how to do that properly. So this all kind of falls into the uh, maintenance and taking care of uh, the MDV. Uh, but that kind of goes across 
basically any blade that you mm -hmm. have, right? Um, and so that should just be a consistent thing, right? Mm -hmm. If you carry it and, and it is consistently used, then you should at least inspect it, at the mm -hmm. very least inspect it to make sure that nothing's gonna fall apart. Because mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, that is your responsibility. Yes. Um, yeah, it's definitely no. not our responsibility. Our responsibility is to manufacture to the best capable uh, possibility that we have. Where the responsibility trades hands is when you own the product now and it's an assembled product. Like I've mentioned a couple of times, anything that's assembled wants to come apart. Mm -hmm. it, nothing comes out of the machine like this. Right. This is all assembled. Somebody's put this together, every single piece of it. Um, individual pieces are manufactured, assembled, just like a car. A car doesn't come out of the end of the factory line. Just bloop, pops out the end of a tube and it's done. It's assembled. Therefore, it wants to come apart. Yeah. Um, and the same thing with a knife. So absolutely, yeah. Just good maintenance on anything that you have that's mechanical mm -hmm. will go a long way. And that goes for knives, especially. At least until we start 3D printing cars and then... Then we can start 3D printing knives, which we can already do. Matter of fact, um, V Knives won Knife of the Year last year at Blade Show with a 3D printed steel knife. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's the way of the future. Those things are expensive. They are expensive. Those Those expensive machines. machines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. All right, brother. Well, I appreciate your time again. Um, you know, I think we're going to jump to the Q&A. Uh, so we'll have some more conversation in a second. So cool. appreciate it. Sounds good. Yep. Thanks, bro. Mm -hmm.